In this video, I will be going over the dam break tutorial in Transat. If you have not already done so, I would recommend to view the tutorial backward facing step. In this tutorial, we will be learning about the multi phase simulations in Transat, specifically with the level Z method. We will also learn how to make custom initial conditions. We will be using an XML file. The following shows our problem setup. We have a domain with walls on each side. The majority of the domain is filled with air with a small section that has water. Due to gravity, when the simulation starts, the water will disperse and spread through the domain. The two fluids are water and air, and we have an unsteady two-dimensional problem. Let's begin our setup. With Transit open, I will create a new project. First, I will enter the Mesh tab and set my domain and grid. For the problem setup, I will place the x min at 0, x max at 1.795, y min at 0, y max at 0 0.8975, and for the 2D problem, I'll leave the z min at 0 and set the z max at 0 0.2. For defining the cells, I'll discret discretize the x direction by 80, the y direction by 40, the z direction by 2 to make one cell. I will set the cell ratio and maximal ratio to 1 for each direction. Next, I will go to the blocks and divide the domain into four blocks, two in the x and two in the y direction. Under boundaries, I will define the boundary conditions, and we'll have just two for this simulation, a wall and a symmetry condition. Under the wall condition, if we open up the properties and go to the interface tracking tab, we should ensure that the film thickness is given as a negative number. This sets this parameter off. We will define the X surfaces, Y surfaces as walls, and both Z surfaces as symmetry conditions. Alternatively, we could have left the Z surfaces empty, and by default, they would have been set as a symmetry condition. Next, if we go into our input tab, we can turn on our basic equations of pressure, U and V velocity. We'll turn on gravity, as negative 9.81 in the y direction and set hydrostatic on. We'll turn on reference properties with a reference pressure of 101,300 pascals and a reference velocity of one and a reference length of 0 0.9 meters. Under advanced models, we want the multi-phase flow method and we'll use level set. With the properties, Ensure that surface tension is set to zero. We can now define our phase properties. Phase one will set as air with a density of one and viscosity of 1.7 e to the negative five. Phase two as water will set with a density of 1000 and a viscosity of 0 0.0017. For our simulation parameters, we'll be running an unsteady simulation for a total time of 0 0.6 seconds. We'll have a max number of time steps of 500, and under advanced options, we'll set the initial time step of 3 e to the negative 4, and 40 iterations per time step. We'll increase the auto relaxation factor to 0 0.91. With adaptive time stepping, we'll set some of these parameters. With the CFL limits, with a min from 0 0.5 to a max of 1, diffusion of 1 to 2, and a surface tension from 0 0.5 to 0 0.9.
Continuing with our simulation parameters, we'll go to the equations and set all quantities. Increase the convergence tolerance to 1 e to the negative 3. Under the advanced solver options, we'll go to level set and ensure that the convection scheme is set to quick. We can skip the initial conditions because this will be defined by a custom XML file. Under output management, we'll ensure the file format is pair view, created every 50 time steps. Under output variables, ensure the primary variables are set to be output and include as well density and level set. Confirm that non-dimensional numbers will be calculated. We can now go to the Execute tab and save our simulation. Now we'll need to save an XML file into our project directory. There is an XML file specific to this tutorial loaded with the tutorials that come with Transat. To find these files, navigate to your File Explorer under the C directory, Users, Public, Public Documents, Transat Tutorials, 4.1 Dam Break. We'll copy initial conditions, initial conditions XML document to our project folder. We'll confirm that we want to replace the file. In order for Transat to recognize the new XML file, we'll have to load the project. This concludes the setup for our dam break. We can now set the number of processors as we wish, up to four, and run the simulation. With the Transat simulation finished, I can open up ParaView to visualize the results. I will load the results from the VTM file. To begin, I will display the density of the simulation. We can see the clear contour where water meets air. As we play the simulation, we can see the water break into the domain. Another possibility to show the interface between air and water is with the level set interface fee. If I hide the results of the dam break and I create a contour and change the contour by fee with the value range of zero and I click apply, we can see the contour. This is not so helpful, but in addition to density, can provide a better view of the interface. This concludes the dam break tutorial. I hope you found this tutorial useful.